huge difference in that period is that the Huskies couldn't get nearly as many through to the net because good fronting by Lowell. Lowell also had some good opportunities, especially the second half of that first period, but goaltender Nichols was on point in that first period. And we'll show you, if you don't believe me, believe this. Here's Dylan Zink going to bring it in. He's going to drop the puck back to C.J. Smith, and why not? He's on a 10-game streak, but Nichols again with good body positioning, head positioning, square to the shooter. Back to the point, find the puck through traffic, and again, hold on to it like Velcro. Nothing's bouncing off of him. Tough first period for the youngster, Joseph Masonis with the point on the power play. Evan Campbell doesn't make him pay, though. Gets the breakaway, shorthanded opportunity. Campbell just two goals on this season. A player that will definitely bring more. So 0-0 after one period of play. Nichols with 14 saves in that first period. What would happen in the second? On the power play, Patrick Kirkland uh, to Jeff White, and the rocket shot just wide, Brendan. Yeah, that's a great chance right there. That's behind the back head. One time or two to the side, and then think. Yeah, that's right. Now, Kevin Boyle also had a fantastic uh, game in the second period. He had 14 He had 14 saves in uh, the uh, the contest thus far, 10 saves in uh, the second period. And a two-on-one opportunity now. Uh, Gambardella's pass batted away. A really uh, physical back-and-forth contest in this one. And really, it was a, a all... UMass low attacking, but again, all great play by Nichols in this contest. Uh, back and forth it was, and it was Nichols always coming up strong. 23 saves for Nichols thus far in the game. Nine in the second period. And again, Nichols shutting the door, but this UMass of Lowell team really kept coming at it, really kept fighting hard, and he would come back and pay off. Nichols again once more with another of his 23 saves, but after a while, it's that opportunity that finally... Here's A.J. White, back to the point for Zink. Zink to his left. Edward fires it wide. Kapla fakes the pass, takes it down low. Now we'll bring it up top and look for Zink. On the one time, Zink has stopped there, gets his own rebound out in front. Score! Chappie, all alone in front of the net, a power play goal with just six seconds remaining here in the second period, and the Riverhawks draw first blood. Patience and determination are going to lead to this goal right here. The shot from Zink, the block, and everybody's following Zink. Nobody picks up Chappie, who is past me. The goaltender Nichols more than far enough. There's that Kapla starting and Zink almost finishing. But he gets the puck back and finds Chappie, who's all by himself. Chappie's eighth goal of the season. Drake he fires it in deep. Polly in after it. Buck loose in the corner to get it back to Jen. Quick pass over the shot. Score! It came from the point. Drake fired it. Traffic in front of the net. And it finds its way through. We're tied up at one here in the third. A lot of traffic in front of the net. Not exactly sure who's going to get credit, although Paulie, the reaction maybe leads to me to believe that he did get a piece of it. Let's take a look, though, as the puck is going to go from the corner back to the point, and it's going to work its way around. So the good battle by Tage Thompson gets it back to the point. D to D pass. The Tunov's in front. Paulie's in front. Let's see if it ends up coming off Paulie. He's going to leave the corner, number nine, White. And you can't tell. I think Paulie yeah, does end up right. getting the Pauly stick coming on it right across there. there at the last moment. Got his stick in on it. It seemed to me a quick one. McGrath comes. Now he got that left leg first, I think. Take a look at it again. I know the stick got to the puck, but it looked like he made contact with his left skate first. Tell me if I'm wrong here. McGrath is going to extend the leg, the dive. See, but he's on his left leg. I yeah. Think. Close enough that you know what he's calling. It'll be a penalty shot here. Ron said this week he's playing some of the best hockey of his career. Here he comes on the penalty shot. McGrath to the doorstep. Looks for the back end. Nichols gets that left pad on it, and we skate on tied at one. Got to like the patience of Nichols. The, the, the patience of a goaltender, the objective of a goaltender here is to outweigh the forward. Get him to make a move. And he, it, see, he almost looks like he's going to poke check him as he brings the stick, the knob of his stick back up. See, it's ready to lock. It's in his position. It's down low and then watch right here he starts going forward so that little movement right there Tom throws off McGrath just enough and he doesn't make 
Puck taken on the right side. Down low, it's Pauly digging at it. Now Thompson comes and he scores! Seventh power play goal of the season. Nobody has more in NCAA hockey. And the Huskies have silenced the Sanga Center with two third period goals. Thompson does it again, waiting for the loose change to come to him. Good work, which you gonna change right there. Latuna down low. Paulie's gonna push it to the front. Now Boyle just can't cover it. See how Thompson does the smart thing there and doesn't get too close to the crease area. Sometimes you gotta let the puck come to you. Thompson is the third guy, the F3 in that situation. He hovers, he waits, he gets it, and then he sizzles it right there. Stick up the toe to the front plate, snaps it up high. And Nichols with a big save after that.